sickness, something we all experience. From coughs and colds to weird rashes we don't talk about for our friends. What? I know it's not just me. To that pain in your lower back that you've been trying to ignore. It is estimated that between 2017 and 2018, Great Britain lost 30 million days of work due to sickness. And in the United States, work illness and injury costs employers $225 billion annually. So who do we go and see when we're feeling poorly and can't struggle into the office anymore? No, not your mum. The doctor. That's who. But have you ever wondered how the medical profession came to be? Or in fact, who started the profession at all? Well, take a seat and prepare to be amazed because today's episode is about Egyptian genius Imhotep, the father of modern medicine. Imhotep was born sometime around 2667 BCE in Egypt. A commoner by birth, but genius by nature, Imhotep is what is known as a polymath, and during his lifetime mastered the arts of astronomy, architecture, poetry, mathematics and medicine. For anyone wondering what a polymath is, listen to the end of the episode for a really great explanation. Imhotep's name means he who comes in peace and he is the only Egyptian besides Amenhotep to be fully deified becoming the Egyptian god of wisdom and medicine. As a builder, Imhotep is the first recorded master architect and designed the Step Pyramid of Doja, which remains to this day a miracle of engineering and is recognised as the first monumental stone structure. In ancient Egypt, the soul was thought to consist of nine aspects and one of them, the Ba, the bird-shaped image often found on tomb engravings, was able to fly from earth to the heavens at will. However, in order to return to the correct body, it required a recognisable earthly landmark and so the pyramids were created with the likeness of the king in front of them to enable the Ba to find its rightful home. Once the Ba high above saw the home of its owner, it could swoop down, enter and visit the earthly plane again. The statue of Doja erected at the Step Pyramid is one of the oldest known life-size Egyptian statues in existence and would have been created for this purpose as well as to remind visitors of the king's legacy. One of the most amazing things about the pyramid is that the alignment of every architectural component was fixed according to the position of the stars and the true four directions of the world. Meaning that somehow Imhotep found a way to map the stars some 4,000 years before the invention of the telescope. Now, if you've had a traditional education, you may be really confused, as you would have been told that Hippocrates, from whom the oath sworn by doctors called the Hippocratic Oath is named, was the father of medicine. However, Imhotep was practicing medicine and writing on the subject some 2,200 years before Hippocrates was born. I'll say that again. Imhotep was practicing medicine 2,000 years. 200 years before Hippocrates was born. Sir William Osler said it was Imhotep who was the real father of medicine and stated that Imhotep was the first figure of a physician to stand out clearly from the mist of antiquity. Imhotep diagnosed and treated over 200 diseases 15 diseases of the abdomen, 11 of the bladder, 10 of the rectum, 29 of the eyes, and 18 of the skin, hair, nails, and tongue. Specifically, Imhotep treated tuberculosis, gallstones, appendicitis, 
gout and arthritis. He also performed surgery and practiced some dentistry. Imhotep extracted medicine from plants. He knew the position and function of the vital organs and the circulation of the blood system. So today, let's stop and take a moment to say a huge thank you to Imhotep, the real father of modern medicine. To learn more about Black History, please check out the Black History Buff podcast, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest and website. Just Google Black History Buff and you'll find us there or hit the link below. Oh, and if you enjoyed this, please share because Black History is world history. Oh yeah, I nearly forgot. Here's Josh's polymath explanation. Hey guys, how's it going? So let's get right into it. So the term polymath comes from the Greek and it's broken down into two base words, poly meaning many and math meaning subject. And so in the Renaissance, this would refer to someone who was an expert in several different fields. Leonardo da Vinci is a perfect example of this. You know, the everyman, you know, artist, um, scientist, inventor, etc., etc., etc. This is not to be confused with a jack of all trades and master of none. That would have been the local smithy or workman, right? There's a huge difference between that and your Leonardo da Vinci. So the nuance here is that a polymath would have been a jack of all trades, master of some. And therein lies the true key, the polymathic mindset, the way that they look at life, the way that they attack problems, right? So because of this mastery that they had, um, what would happen is when they saw a problem, it wouldn't, it wouldn't just come at them from one, one angle, or from two. They could look at it from multiple angles, all at one time. And because of the mastery that they had in different fields, they were able to see connections in seemingly unrelated topics. And because of that, instead of just seeing multiple problems, what they really did was saw the big problem as a whole and where the root of that problem came from. And then they were able to tailor the appropriate solution that allowed humankind to enter into new horizons. This ushered in a new era of understanding and invention. And, um, and it, it just brought humankind to new heights. And so if we look at the way technology has advanced over the past few decades, information is coming at us at an alarming rate and the problems that we face today are far more complex and far more difficult and far more different than those that our fathers faced or our grandfathers faced and what that calls for is a different solution ever since the industrial revolution roughly around that time frame we the Western culture has have focused on a specialist's mindset, a monomath sticking to one thing and being good at that and working for a company for years and years and years on end. Well now, as time has progressed, we're starting to see that technology is taking care of those more simpler tasks and that what people are really good at is getting creative and seeing things from different, different angles. And um, that's really where I feel as though the pendulum is shifting from the monomath to the polymath. You can find Josh at the polymathman.blogspot.com. That was a great explanation, right? If you want some more, more information, if you go to my website, which is blackhistorybuff.com, I've put a link underneath this podcast episode that will take you to some additional learning and resources particularly useful for any teachers out there or any parents wanting to just learn a little bit more if you've got any feedback on that or you'd like me to add something please give me a shout 
I'm really open to providing resources to teachers and parents.